water systems. Eating food or drinking water with high levels of creosote may cause burning in the mouth and throat, stomach pains, severe skin irritation, convulsions, and kidney and liver problems in humans. In the creosote, if the creosote leaks into the groundwater, it can adversely affect the ecosystem and the water quality. So, Filling creosote treated wood may help a little, but the chemicals may still find its way into the soil and the groundwater. The railroad ties that are presently on the property do not contain shielding for water prevention from storm or leakage in the soil and the groundwater. Mountain View designated as a vulnerable community by the Environmental Protection Agency due to a large number of businesses that produce toxic and hazardous substances into the community. Another contributing factor is a large number of young children and elderly residents who are at an increased risk to environmental pollutants. Allowing commercial development into the community that does not benefit the community invites degradation of the residential area, also the decreasing of property value of the community and a lower quality of life for residents. The transition zone referred to by the applicant is not in keeping fair and equitable standards for a residential area. The existing buffer between the residential community west of 2nd Street and the manufacturing M1 zone on the east side of 2nd Street is provided for by the Federal Land Acquisition Program supported by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife via the Oral Urban Wildlife Refuge with its environmental justice component and protection of wildlife. Second Street has also been approved for the El Camino Rio de Tierra Adentro National Historic Trail. This historic trail will be used for tourism showing our culture and heritage background and to help the economy of Albuquerque. The State Historic Preservation Code of Ordinance states that no industrial business M1 may be located on a National Historic Trail. Code Enforcement and Zoning Cultural Properties, Codes and Regulations, Historic Preservation Planner, Planning Department. And uh, the phone number is 505-924-3927. Uh, we ask that um, this be researched and entered as new information. Thank you. Five minutes left. Next, I have Lauro, Lauro Silva, Maria Globus, followed by Marla Painter. Um, <clears throat> may I ask a question? Is it appropriate to ask a question? Um. Are you part of the group, the appellants group? I'm a separate appellate group, and I, I just want to make sure that was clear because it wasn't clear from uh, Mr. Pearson's introduction. Okay, Here yeah, we be, we'll have, oh, sorry, we'll have two different, both appeals will be held separately. All right, I, I'm, I'm on the one for Mountain View Community Action, not, not this current one, just to be clear. Thank you. Okay, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Julianne? Mr. Silva? Yes, my name is Lauro Silva. I live at 5005 5th Street Southwest, uh, immediately down the road from uh, 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 297 Eastview. And uh, I've lived here, well, our family have, have lived here for over 25 years. And uh, uh, we have made major investments in our property. We don't uh, plan to leave anytime soon. And uh, I have uh, fruit trees, uh, peach trees, uh, pomegranate, grapevines, uh, uh, gardens with uh, tomatoes, chilies, uh, corn, and others. I also have two cherry trees and, uh, and uh, grapevines and flowers, about 20, uh, uh, 20 flowers, uh, rose, rose bushes. So we've made uh, quite a bit of a change uh, an investment in our community here uh, with our neighbors and try to maintain uh, a peaceful, a healthy neighborhood. The, 
the arguments uh, that I make here to have, to have to do with constitutional issues. One of those is, uh, is uh, uh, environmental protection uh, due process uh, arguments made be primarily because the, this uh, operation has been in effect working, making, uh, making money. I'm sure that they're making quite a good living, uh, but they've been in violation and uh, code enforcement uh, for the county has not done anything to tell them to stop uh, uh, being uh, operating illegally. Uh, number one, uh, that that applies the equal protection clause of the New Mexico Constitution on the new due process and reasonableness. There, there's a, a the issue of reasonableness of making the decision uh, by the county is. Uh, is uh, a, a case called Smith versus Henry Restix. Uh, uh, and uh, that went before the Court of Appeals against the uh, County Commission. I believe it's a 2008 uh, matter. Um, the, the, the standard regarding spot zoning, we have spot zoning that is in violation of the resolution uh, 116 86 uh, that the county passed uh, quite some time ago. And uh, the purpose of that uh, is to make sure that the city and county com uh, comprehensive plan promotes health, safety, morals, and general welfare. Uh, and it, it, it is enhanced by reasonable flexibility. It says, whereas given general policies for consideration of zone map changes and other zoning regulations, changes should be recognized as determinative. Determinative. And that has to do with the reasonableness uh, of the application. So uh, in terms of uh, the burden, the burden is on the applicant show why, why the change should be made. Now, everything except some areas of Second Street, which are zone C N for neighborhood to benefit the neighborhood, is totally residential. Totally residential, except for those minor, and those are community neighborhood. It's called Z N C N. And if if uh, the owners of that property would be doing something that's beneficial to the neighborhood, we would be more than happy uh, to support them. But in this particular case, it's only uh, helping the private interest of the landowner themselves that are part of the family that owns Guzman Enterprises that have many businesses of construction, especially in the Mountain View and the South Valley area. Uh, they are- Mr. Silva? Yes. Real quick, you have one minute left. So if there's other speakers and you want them to speak, you need to relinquish. If not, you can keep going. Yes, I don't know that, that there's any other speakers uh, there. Uh, the, the resolution that I was, I was talking about, uh, if you look at uh, the, the, uh, the resolutions under Appendix A of the Zoning Ordinance for the County, uh, under, under J, uh, the, the, the zone change request would be a strip zone, or a spot zone, and those uh, for, for, for commercial purposes uh, would require, of course, uh, a special use permit, which has not been granted. And that's where they're still operating illegally. Uh, the, the area of the zone change is different from the surrounding land because it could function as a transition. Well, there is no transition. The transition zone uh, would, uh, is on the other side of the railroad track, immediately east uh, of, of this neighborhood. And there's M1 zoning and M2 zoning, so it's it's totally inappropriate to encroach in our neighborhood in that manner. Okay, thank you. Ten uh, minutes is up. Oh uh, oh no, I had a couple of other other. That, that's continue. Kevin. Yeah, the timing's ten minutes. You can during the rebuttal summation, you can go on again. So we thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Now we'll move on to the opponents' presentations, which is fifteen minutes. Opponents? Wait, what about Mountain View Community Action? That, that's the next appeal, correct, Mr. Pearson? 
No. That's this appeal. Uh, Chairman Talbert, yes, that, that is correct. There is still another appeal to be heard uh, before the this the session is done. This is okay. the this is for 5A. Yours will be 5B, Ms. Painter. Okay, for appeals, the first on the list I have Mr. Art de la Cruz, followed by Salvador Guzman, followed by Rebecca Guzman. Okay. Thank Good you. afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. A quick question before I begin my dialogue. It strikes me as strange that we're going to have two separate appeals only because my information would then have to be read twice. Uh, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but I'll move forward regardless. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I'm Mark De La Cruz. I'm the agent for Mr. and Mrs. Salvador Guzman, and I reside at 1800 Elena Circle Southwest. And I hope you can hear me because I'm wearing this mask. Mr. and Mrs. Guzman, and I want to thank all of you and county staff, including the CPC, for all of your hard work on behalf of the citizens of Berlio County. We oppose both appeals for a twice CPC approved rezone change from CN to C1 at 297 Eastview Southwest. This property is located in the community of Mountain View and is composed of 0.79 acres. The owners, Mr. and Mrs. Guzman, are a young couple who are raising their two young sons on a street just over from their small but successful tractor business operation, which is called Guzman Tractor Services, LLC. While not relevant to this case, this business is operated by Mr. Guzman and one employee. Chairman Talbert and commissioners, we are requesting that you deny this appeal and stand with the twice unanimous approval vote by the Planning Commission for a zone change at this location being at the corner of 2nd Street and Eastview. This zone change is consistent with county ordinance and especially Resolution 116. This property is adjacent and near to numerous industrial and commercial businesses, including the Water Authority's reclamation plant and the very active homeless shelter called Joy Junction. As stated, this property is currently zoned neighborhood commercial CN. Our change request is to C1 is for the purpose of giving the Guzman family more business flexibility and to allow them to continue their current business by later applying for and hopefully securing a temporary special use approval for their small contractor yard. Commissioners, the community of Mountain View is largely a working class community, but is also at a lower social and is also at a lower socioeconomic status and is, with, and is without the commercial conveniences others enjoy. Having commercial opportunities in the area would also help create more economic justice for the people of this community. Currently on the entire stretch of 2nd Street, there is only one small convenience store, which is only about 600 square feet. If you approve this C1 zone change request and hopefully others in the future, you would be approving commercial activities such as a bakery, a candy store, a grocery store, a hardware store, a service station, a restaurant, or a sporting goods store, and even doctor's offices. The Second Street Corridor houses the Valle de Oro Urban Wildlife Refuge and the soon to be completed beautiful visitor center. Certainly the area could offer more commercial activity for residents and visitors of the refuge while providing more jobs for the community and the area in general. Commissioners, know that the Neighborhood Association appealing this case is only partially representative of this community. And the other appellant has been created to appear to be something more than it is in actuality. And I don't feel that they have any substantive standing to appeal. I suspect that this was done specifically to give a false illusion. Please understand that the Guzmans are a, are a family along with their relatives 
and that they have long lived in this community. They care about this community and its well-being. Ask numerous neighbors and they will tell you how often the Guzmans help by cleaning senior citizen yards. They provide free gravel for driveways. And as you have seen in your packet, there is an extensive list of petition signers, many, many that are within very close proximity. In fact, most of them are, 130 of them are in proximity of this property. These same neighbors have shown up to all the hearings and would have been here today, except for the venue that we must under, have to deal with now. But there has been no less than 30 to 40 people at every single meeting. This help from the neighbors is because Mr. and Mrs. Guzman are respected and are a part of the deep fabric of this old community. Mr. Chairman, we're going to have some speakers this time. Okay, Julianne, could you give a time check, please? Nine and a half minutes. Say that again. Nine and a half minutes. Nine and a half minutes, Art. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca and Rebecca Guzman. I live at 4911 Third Street. And um, I'm here today that you approve the zone change request for many reasons. We live one street away from the property that's in mention here. And that's no more than 300 feet. As neighbors, we want what's best for the neighborhood and we have no intent on causing harm, but instead to invest and beautify it. We are involved in the community and our children attend Mountain View Elementary. We often ride bikes and take walks throughout the community. We have the support of close neighbors surrounding the property within 500 feet and the majority of Mountain View community is in favor of the zone change. We ourselves gave over 130 signatures of support from Mountain View residents alone. Over the last several hearings, we were thankful for the many community members that came to show their support and that are watching online now. The approval of this zone change is very important to sustain our business and will also provide future commercial opportunities for our community. Um, thank you guys for your time today, and I hope that you will approve this request. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Robert Chavez. I live at 11215 Eagle Court in Albuquerque. I'm employed by Mr. Guzman. I am married. I have three daughters. We live in the South Valley. I am thankful to work nearby. As a company, we always make sure to keep the property clean, drive safe. I am proud to work for the company that takes pride and engages with the community. In support, I am in support of this zone change because it gives me the opportunity to provide for my family and grow in the South Valley in a positive way. Thank you. Hi, my name is Robert Haynes. I live at 301 Eastview, about 100 feet from uh, Mr. Guzman's uh, business. And uh, I, I hope they do pass the, the zoning. Uh, I have no issues with his property whatsoever. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, we respectfully request that you deny this appeal and end this family's year-long battle. This protracted effort has been expensive and stressful because of the uncertainty of the outcome. We feel these appeals are capricious and that the appellants do not significantly represent the community. As an association in this case, or associations, they have made no effort to know their own neighbors, the Guzmans, and even less to understand what this family wishes to do commercially in the future or what they do now. 
As an example, the railroad ties that are cited earlier by Mrs. Garcia were there temporarily because Mr. Guzman has a contract with Real Metro and one with CNM. Real Metro asked that rail runner asked that he remove those railroad ties, which he did. He stored them there temporarily. At present, there are only 30 railroad ties left. By the way, railroad ties are used for landscaping everywhere. Chairman, my clients have met all of the county's requirements via county ordinance, resolutions, and a C1 zone change on this corridor would allow for the beginning of a vibrant and much needed commercial activity. While at the same time, helping secure the future of this young family Mr. and Mrs. Guzman depend on this business to succeed to feed their family and their one employee. Commissioners, with your help, that change can finally begin. Thank you. We stand for questions. Thank you, Mr. De La Cruz. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. De La Cruz. Appellant summation or rebuttal? Mr. Silva, did you have, did you want to finish your comments from before? You have Five minutes. Uh, uh, one of the rebuttal issues is that the fact is that those railroad ties uh, comprise the entire west wall of that property, which is, uh, I don't I believe it's uh, over 50, 60 feet. Uh, railroad ties that are stacked up about seven feet high along that entire wall. So it's not true that they do not exist there anymore. Uh, what, uh, what we're looking at is a spot zone itself that is illegal under Bennett versus the city, city council, the city of Las Cruces, a spot zone is impermissible precisely because its benefits uh, uh, primarily accrue to the narrow private interest of the property owner. The record does not su support such a conclusion in this case. And as a result, we conclude that the city council from this has, uh, that uh, in this particular case, it does not comport with a comprehensive plan uh, for, for this area, uh, for the county. Also, in the case of Watson versus uh, the town council of Bernalillo, it defines a spot zoning as an attempt to wrench a single lot from its environment and give a new rating that disputes the tenor of the neighborhood and which affects only, a, only the use of a particular piece of property or a small group of adjoining properties and it's not related to the general plan for the community as a whole, but it's primarily for the private interest of the owner of the property as so zoned. This was already, a, there was accommodation because it's zoned CN, CN to benefit the neighborhood. Now, uh, the benefit is, is, is primarily for the benefit of the Guzmans. If they want to put something else there that benefits the neighborhood, I would absolutely join in supporting them, and I, I respect the family. I, rep I and one time I re represented his grandfather and helped him out, uh, and and his uncle. I knew his uncle, so I, I'm I'm familiar with uh, Guzman Enterprises. Uh, but but in our neighborhood, we've invested a lot to protect our neighborhood, uh, to do uh, protect the environment of our neighborhood, especially with all the contamination that exists across the other way uh, of the railroad tracks on the other side, the east side of uh, Second Street. So I, if, uh, if, if the appeal uh, in this matter is something that, uh, that is unreasonable, we need to be able to preserve the quality of life in this neighborhood. And, and I certainly would welcome uh, to speak with uh, uh, Mr. Guzman and family uh, uh, any time. Of course, I've been followed uh, uh, by their truck all the way to my house uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, drive by and stop right in front of my yard. Uh, there's a, a, a sign there posted that say uh, uh, trespassers will be shot uh, on site or something to that effect on the, on the property. Well, that's not, that's not very neighborly. Uh, but uh, uh, the, those cases that I mentioned, uh, the issue of the environmental protection or the equal protection under the New Mexico Constitution, I think are, are, are arguments that uh, 
that we need to be able to preserve this neighborhood. We right, we have a right to preserve our neighborhoods uh, so that we have a good quality of life. People, in, not just myself, but my family, we have a community garden that we started. Uh, there's 52 families involved in that. Uh, and the, the people that have showed up for the hearings on behalf of, uh, as uh, Mr. De La Cruz mentioned, uh, are people that are employees of Guzman Enterprises. You know, maybe not necessarily, I'm pretty sure not, they don't work directly for Mr. Uh, Salvador Guzman. Uh, and again, as I stated, uh, I have uh, had uh, good relationships with, with, uh, with the family, their grandfather and, uh, and their uncle. So I, I, I would respectfully request that overturn that, that appeal. Thank you. I Thank think you. Nora might have something also. I, it sounds like Nora wants to say something in rebuttal. Got 30 seconds. Nora? Ms. Garcia, you have 30 seconds. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Mr. Pearson. Uh, yes, this is Nora, and uh, I just want to remind you of the fire hazard. We had Albuquerque Metal, which is further away than this company is, and we had to have a complete lockdown at the Mountain View Elementary School, and the parents had to come in, lose work to pick up their children because of the fire. And we were outside doing our garden, my grandson, started growing tumor on his face and had to go in for surgery. So I am telling you it is a potential hazard to the community and children and the elderly. So Thank as you. far as landscaping goes, landscaping is, Garcia, is you're, not you're a good, it's you. not good to put in that type of landscaping anymore. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Pearson. Uh, Chairman Talbert, members of the commission, just three quick issues. Um, one, both appeals are related to the same issue and staff would like to recommend that the commission avoid voting on the first appeal until the second appeal is fully heard. And second, um, just a couple of quick notes. The applicants are here because they have received a notice of violation for zoning um, due to the contractor's yard that is present. A resolution of that is currently being pursued administratively, and it's a two-part resolution. The first part is a zone change to C1, which would then allow them to apply for a special use permit for a contractor's yard. Without the C1 zoning, they cannot proceed to the step two. The difference between CN and C1 is not significant. As far as the uses go, it does allow for more uses but it's can still considered a community commercial zoning. CN, C1, C2, O1 are all considered buffer zones that would protect neighborhoods from noise from very busy streets, M1 zoning across the street, railroad tracks, et cetera. So that is um, what is meant by a transition zone. So I just wanna clarify those uh, points and I stand for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Uh, Commissioner you, Quesada, Chairman. Commissioner Piscotti, any questions with this particular piece of the appeal? Um, I just, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, um, I just, uh, you know, I just want to know how the second one and the first one, uh, I do have some questions, but I don't want to ask questions, I guess, maybe until I hear uh, the second part of the appeal. Um, uh, just because they separated them. And so I'm unsure of, of you know, when to ask my questions, um, but uh, I definitely uh, would like to ask some questions. I just don't want to waste our time. I just want to make sure we get through it and then, and then we could ask you know, uh, some of the valid questions to staff uh, about, about the you know, legitimacy of some of these uh, claims. Mr. Pearson, would it be better to just hear the second one and then ask all the questions at once? But, uh, Chairman Tower, whatever pleases the commission. You okay with that, Stephen? We'll hear the second one. Yeah, just because it's the same thing. I just don't understand. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I think it's because it's two different groups. So at least the way it's presented here. So with that, uh, based on Mr. Pearson's, we will uh, hold off uh, till we hear 
presentation again. It looks like, again, a different group of people speaking for the Mountain View Action, uh, Mountain View Community Action. So with that, uh, we'll start and it, with staff's presentation, which shouldn't take five minutes. And then we'll go on again. And the appellant this time will, sounds like it's Ms. Painter. So Mr. Pearson. Commissioner Talbert, members of the commission, the next item before you is COA 2020-0002-CZ-2019-0013. It's appeal of a zone map meal amendment from CN to C1 on a property located 297 HU. The December 4, 2019 public hearing, the County Planning Commission voted to approve request for zone map amendment from CN to C1. There are seven findings. Mountain View Community Action is now appealing the approval. The CPC recommended approval request with findings that include the economic benefit of the community. The request was originally heard in October of 2019. No opposition uh, was either submitted or present at the hearing. The recommendation of approval by the CPC was then appealed by both the Mountain View Community Action and Mountain View Neighborhood Association. The appeals were scheduled to be held in November and were um, remanded to the CPC for a rehearing when new evidence was determined to be present. <clears throat> CPC reheard the request in December 2019 and voted to recommend approval. Neighborhood Association submitted new appeals opposing the CPC recommendation. The original hearing for both items was in March and was deferred in March, June, and September. The first appeal uh, was submitted by the Mountain View Community Action. The appellant argues the CPC abused their discretion. The approval would constitute a spot zone. They are not change conditions or an error in mapping. And the applicant mischaracterized the uses in the surrounding neighborhood. Once again, it is important to note there is currently a contractor's yard being operated on the site. The zone change would allow for the applicant to be able to apply for a special use permit to allow the contractor's yard. The zone change from CN to C1 is not a significant change in terms of the uses that are allowed. They're all community re uh, neighborhood related. C1 does allow for a larger range, but is considered to be an appropriate neighborhood buffer. Staff recommends denial of the appeal with the findings of approval by the CPC. I stand for any questions. Thank you, sir. Okay, Julianne, do you want to call the appellants for this particular appeal? Uh, we can start with Ms. Marla Painter, followed by Lotto Silva. Okay, Ms. Painter. You can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, Chairman Talbert and commissioners, uh, my name is Marla Painter. I live on an old farm at 506 Valley High Street Southwest in Mountain View. I've been there for approximately 23 years. My husband's been there for about 40 years. Um, we're about four blocks from the Guzman property that we're discussing today. I'm representing Mountain View Neighborhood Association. I'm also a member of the Mountain View Neighborhood Association. I'm sorry, I'm representing Mountain View Community Action, but I'm also a member of the Neighborhood Association and we work closely together. We are both recognized neighborhood associations. I want, we want to thank you uh, for hearing our appeal. And um, I want to begin by saying that uh, Mountain View Community Action bears no ill will toward the Guzman family. They are a lovely young family. And we realize that they're working very hard, not only to feed their family, but to get ahead in this world. And that is as it should be. These are good people with an idea that is not good for the health and safety of the neighborhood. And that is our objection. We understand why they don't get why we don't, why we are opposing uh, them locating their kind of business close to the residential neighborhood within the residential neighborhood. It causes us all in Mountain View Community Action consternation, but we have no choice because there is a larger issue in this case, which the commissioners should pay close attention to uh, within this appeal. Be reminded that getting this zone change opens the gateway to getting the special use permit for what is very close to an industrial use that in that it involves large trucks and storage of hazardous materials, as well as possibly uh, nighttime lighting. Although we're not clear about that because we're not clear about what they actually will be doing there um, and if it's the same as what they have been doing for the past years. 
the Guzmans tell us that their business replaces railroad ties, prehistoric railroad ties, uh, that they paint parking strips and that they clean out retention ponds. Uh, we can see the creosote ties as others have noticed, but we can't see what painting materials are on site stored uh, or how they store them, nor do we know what their practices are concerning the cleaning out of retention ponds. All of these things are potentially, could potentially um, cause there to be storage of hazardous materials on site. You will say that it's not within your purview to monitor toxics on a property, and I understand that. But the truth is that you are the enabler of bad environmental practice when you rezone land like this property that is theoretically protected from industrial use by its existing zoning designation. And the only way that they can get the special use permit for the um, use that they are proposing is by the change in zoning. That's why it's so important to us, this zone change, even though as the staff has said, the uses are not that different. Um, it's this gateway to a special use permit that makes it different. If this property becomes eligible for a special use permit, you're interfering with our ability as people who live there to protect our families and land from contamination. Unfortunately, there is a larger issue. Um, and that is that without overall sound planning practices in our neighborhood, uh, we cannot proceed with creating a healthy neighborhood for people like the Guzman family. It's not sound development practice to justify an illegal use of property by simply rezoning it. And that's a strong principle involved in this case because it could become a pattern. Mountain View was not always an industrial neighborhood. And I hope that over these many hearings on land use in Mountain View that everybody understands that by now. Whatever political and government forces in the 1970s zoned the old agricultural lands east of the railroad in Mountain View for industrial use, they did it without checking with the people who lived there. The area was unzoned. It had been agricultural, but with the MRGCD coming in, a lot of it was, was uh, fallow land. It was virg virgin territory and it was purposely zoned industrial because the county thought they could sneak it by the residents without any political consequence. There were no hearings. There was no consultation with people in Mountain View. And besides, Skinny Brick was already there. So that business opened the door, right? but no one foresaw the kind of industrial use that's proven to be a disaster for this community. It, it was an injustice, but it's now time to stop making, uh, it's now time to stop using the precedent of past mistakes to support further mistakes. The young Guzmans are not unique in their land use practices. They and other families, family members, have been using this particular property for uses outside, the, outside of the zoning designation for many years without consequence. And so of others, there, there's a lot of unfairness in all of this because the Guzmans are going about this in the proper way, whereas um, there's a lot filled with old salvage a couple of blocks from them. No one calls on that piece of property. Their immediate neighbors to the north on the corner of Valley High and 2nd Street are filling their property. They also have an office building located there with industrial trash and equipment, industrial equipment. There is no signs on the property indicating what kind of business it is. And the gates are closed most of the time and often locked. So I've never felt welcome to go in and introduce myself and find out what they're up to. That property is also zoned residential, commercial, and not used properly. A few, a few blocks north of Valley High, <clears throat> on the corner of 2nd Street and Mary Avenue, there is property zoned A1, which has been used for well over 20 years as an overflow salvage yard with a car repair operation also. No one knows what hazardous materials are stored there or have, sp or have spilled. It's a salvage yard on agriculturally zoned land and it is not inspected for hazardous material because no one acknowledges 
how the land has been, has been used all these years. People in our neighborhood are not so uptight that they don't understand the storage of farm equipment and other old stuff. That's a rural lifestyle, but it's when there are toxics involved and blatant ugliness that it becomes unacceptable. <clears throat> we must ask, if the precedent were set now by the rezoning of the Guzman property, what would stop the other businesses I just mentioned from proceeding to apply for different zoning and then a special use permit? They haven't been adhering to their zones legal uses for a very long time, but now they could come to the CPC and the County Commission to request the zone change so they can request a special use permit. Are there other, uh, there are Two other, minutes. I'm sorry? Two minutes, just so you know. Okay. Um, there are um, not many empty properties on Second Street that are zoned residential commercial. We need businesses that attract people to visit Valle de Oro and businesses that serve residents. We're told that the Second Street sector plan is due to begin again. And why would we, why would you, I should say, start rezoning Second Street before the sector plan is, is finished? It's like demolition derby on Second Street now, and we need a plan. Due to the hard and perseverant work of Mountain View residents, the Second Street thoroughfare has begun its journey to reinvent itself as a street that we who live there can be proud of and for neighborhood purposes. We're already starting to use it for neighborhood purposes. So we don't, we don't envision it as a place to store hazardous materials and industrial uh, refuse. You can, you can read the original sector plan and find out what the vision was. And many, many, many people in Mountain View participated in that sector plan development. I think it was about 10 years ago now, but it would never saw the light of day. It was shelved. So um, I just hope that you use, that you ask yourselves, each of you, before you make this decision, uh, what would I tolerate in my neighborhood? What would I wanna live next to? We're counting on you to uphold best practices in land use policy and make the right decision for everyone in Mountain View. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Painter, appreciate it. Um, Mr. De La Cruz, would you like to summarize and? Thank you, Chairman, yes, I would. First, a little history. Mr. and Mrs. Guzman inherited this property from Mr. Guzman's grandmother, Alicia Trujillo. She and Mr. Trujillo had previously operated a business at this location and so applied in 2009 for a trailer and truck storage yard permit with the county, but were denied. The Guzmans started their small two-person operation at this location several years ago believing that this was allowable under their CN designation. They own no other business. Often Salvador Guzman is confused with his older half-brother who owns Guzman Construction Solutions, a large company. The county made them aware that they could not operate a small contractor business at 297 without special authorization. Mindful of their current operation, and a hope for a better future for themselves and the community, they have made this effort. They wish to obey the rules of the road and comply with county law. But back to the railroad ties. They were asked to remove several hundred railroad ties by Rio Metro, which they have a contract with, and they did. Those were on site temporarily. At this juncture, there are only 30 that are stored there now, which will be gone soon also. They do have a fence that is made of railroad ties, something that many, many people throughout the entire city county do. It is allowable and it is acceptable. So this idea that Creosol is just inundating the area is, is, is ludicrous at best. Next, I want you to know, commissioners, Mr. Chairman, that I have a stack of pictures here that we did use, in fact, for the CPC hearing, but we are not set up in this venue to be able to show you. But I have many aerial photos of the area. If you are standing at the Guzman's site on 2nd and Eastview and look to the east 
towards the Manzano Mountains, he would first be greeted the BNSF railroad track. On the other side of the BNSF track, you have heavy industry. If you were to walk two blocks to the west of their property, you would encounter a number of storage yards of heavy equipment, all woven in with residential homes. It is the nature of Mountain View. If you go to about three blocks to the north, you now run into a county approved contractor yard. So when we talk about gateway, I hate to say this, but the cows got out a long, long time ago. The Guzmans have built a, if you, I can't show you, but I have them, beautiful pictures of their property. They take pride in their property. It's fully landscaped. It has a barrier so nobody can see in there. They do not store any toxic material. They do on occasion have to paint, but they do not use paints that are not water-based. And the county is always welcome to inspect their property and in fact do when they feel the need. Commissioners, this family is trying to do the right thing. They know that if they go from CN to C1, they simply have more business options. That's just a fact. They currently have this small contractor yard there. However, it is not their intent to stay there forever. They are not wealthy and they are not related to the older brother that does a lot of business in the community. They are their own business and their own people. Just like each one of us, we have family members. Some do well and some don't, but that doesn't mean it's you. And just because their name is Guzman doesn't mean that there's someone else. They are a young couple trying to do the right thing, trying to get a C1 designation, hopefully then succeed in getting a special use for a temporary time. And we start for questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. De La Cruz. Yep, I think we're gonna have questions here in a few minutes. We'll uh, move on to Ms. Painter. You have five minutes. You're on mute. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, say that I, I'm not going to respond to Agent De La Cruz's personal snarkiness toward the neighborhood associations. Uh, contrary to what he said, uh, we do a lot of very good work and we are very diverse organizations that uh, have members from all over the neighborhood. Um, and I just want to point out again that we have a limited number of neighborhood commercial properties on Second Street, south of Rio Bravo. Um, and all of the theoretical good uses that uh, Mr. De La Cruz mentioned that, can, that uh, he seemed to indicate could only be done if the property was zoned commercial uh, as opposed to residential commercial. All of those uses he pointed out are what neighborhood residential uses beg for, call for. And if we had some kind of an economic development program, in addition to a sector plan for, for Second Street and for the entire neighborhood, but first for Second Street, we could be more, um, more purposeful about how Second Street is developed for the use of the neighborhood. I would much rather there be a little store where neighborhood kids on a hot summer day can go down and get an ice cream cone, then there'd be a, a contractor's yard that may or may not be inspected from time to time. I'm not sure what the criteria is for the county going in inspecting uh, the contract, the illegal contractor's yards on Second Street. But I think that that should be made more clear before you change a zoning uh, of a property. And that's going to set a pattern on Second Street. Believe me, you will hear from all of the illegal uh, yards. And by the way, I don't know what Mr. De La Cruz is talking about where he talks about these heavy equipment yards within our neighborhood. I don't see them. I don't know where he's talking about that they are. But anyway, apart from that, um, you need to put this all in perspective and see it as a system and a system that needs to be complete in terms of the sector plan so we can do the right thing for everybody. Thank you so much, Ms. Painter. We appreciate it. Mr. Pearson. Mr. 
Chairman Talbert, members of the commission, just a couple of quick observations. Um, the zone change and the special use permit are part of a due process that currently exists. Um, there have been legal consequences for government agencies that have uh, refused uh, people due process. And so, you know, staff um, acknowledges that there's uh, discussions about a sector development plan along 2nd Street. However, that's not going to happen in the next couple of months. Uh, that's probably a year and a half, two year timeline for that to, to really start to take form. So this is something that is currently a violation and does need to be resolved in one form or another, either through the denial of zone change and then not being able to move on with the special permit, special use permit application, or the approval of the zone change and then moving on with the special use permit, which is either then approved or denied, which allows us to move forward with enforcement action um, one way or the other. That's all I've got at this point, and I stand for any questions. Uh, Chairman Talbert, I believe you're muted. Oh, yes, thank you. Commissioner Casada. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, I guess a lot of my questions would have to go to staff. Um, after listening to uh, Ms. Painter, uh, you know, uh, we do have a lot of concerns about uh, people uh, using land and not being um, monitored or questioned about how they use their land uh, in that area. Um, I think this uh, comes with a very uh, uh, a big warning uh, to what we do today uh, because um, we can't have, uh, and, 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 and I'll just say this, you know, um, if they are doing stuff that is uh, contaminating the land or putting out uh, 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 things in the air, um, we need to know who they are and we, uh, we need to stop them from using the land improperly. Um, I, I understand uh, the challenges they have in those areas. Um, so I, I wanted to say that. I wanted to say that, you know, as a commissioner, I really want to force um, our uh, uh, Bernalillo County to go and pay everybody a visit. And we have been uh, since I've become the commission. We've really been looking at Coors Boulevard and a lot of these corridors where I, I think that there's improper land use. And I want to make sure that they have the proper uh, either special use permits or zoning to do that. But we have to keep and continue to monitor, monitor these areas uh, to make sure that people are not illegally doing this. Um, with that being said, I have a lot of respect for the Guzmans who are trying to do it right. So, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Pearson, um, how how long would the, it would there be a time to the special use permit? Um, would it would it expire after a certain amount of time? Um, would it give the Guzmans time to establish a business and then perhaps uh, 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 move to another location or move to another? Uh, uh, maybe possible M1 um, uh, property in the future. I just don't know how long special use permits are. I think that's up to, I guess, the CPC or us. Um, so I wanna know what they're asking for and what, what we would be potentially uh, voting for. And um, also um, I wanna know, uh, they're not actually making railroad ties at this location, right? They're, they're, they're temporarily storing them. Um, there's a difference between making railroad ties and having potential uh, contamination. Uh, if you're making railroad ties to then, I think perhaps storing them for a, a small amount of time. Um, but um, I do have railroad yards in my yard. Um, and so I know that they're used uh, for landscaping, but um, you know, I only have a few of them. I don't have a hundred or 200 of them. Um, and then another question I'd like to ask is, has there ever been a fire or any kind of uh, complaint on the Guzman's property? Um, have we ever uh, looked at any kind of contamination coming from that particular property? Uh, and what else did I write down here? Um, I think I think those are the major uh, questions. I at this point I'd like to have answered, and and as I continue to listen, I may come up with some more. Chairman Talbert, uh, Commissioner Quezada, uh, I'm going to do my best to, uh, I was trying to take notes there and hopefully I'll be able to answer all your questions. As, as far as enforcement goes, um, 
we, we are uh, short staffed in the zoning department. Uh, a lot of the enforcement that they do do is uh, complaint driven. So if we don't receive a uh, complaint about something that particularly that's on a short dead end type street, um, we might not see that for a very long period of time. However, if there isn't complaint, the zoning department definitely takes action against it. Um, as far as fires on the property, I'm not aware of any. That would be probably a better question for the Guzmans and the agents, um, but I'm not aware of any. And as far as the, the business process, my understanding is that they are indeed used railroad ties that are probably fairly weathered and are due to be replaced as what I understood from Mr. De La Cruz's testimony. But once again, he could probably clarify that further. Um, and as far as the, the monitoring of the property, property actually gets probably more attention when it's under a special use permit, which would be the second step of this process. So the first step is, do they have the zone change to C1 where they can then apply for the special use permit, which would allow the contractor's yard. If the C1 is approved and if the special use permit is approved, then they're required to put stormwater control measures into place to protect any hazardous materials from rain and stormwater runoff. And that, that is part of the overall process review for a special use permit. So actually a property under a special use permit is probably got more control on it than certainly anything that the county is not actually as aware that is out there for sure. And probably more control than typically something that's in an M1 zone as well. Um, then the next question was the time limit. Typically staff will not recommend approval of a lifetime use for a contractor's yard um, because it does have potential impact. And while the Guzmans might be a really good neighbor, um, if you give the special use permit for life of the use, um, they may eventually move off the property. They may eventually sell the property. They may you know, pass on the kids don't want anything to do it, that they sell it. And another contractor that's not as scrupulous could move on to the property and still be able to maintain it because property, the life of the use goes with the property, not with the property owners. So that's why we typically recommend um, five years for a first time application, three to five years, and then uh, depending on opposition. And then after that, if they've proved to be a good neighbor and they're coming back in with very little opposition, we might recommend a renewal period of slightly longer, 10 years, maybe 15 years if they're been there for a substantial amount of time. Um, and I hope I answered all your questions. I tried to get all those noted. And if I missed any, I'll be glad to answer those if I can. No, I, I think you, you did. Um, so, I mean, I, I understand that we're understaffed and that, you know, you, you, you're better off if somebody does uh, complain. Uh, you know, I want to I want to put this out to the neighborhood association to send me any properties that you see up and down uh, your neighborhood through my office, so we can uh, send staff out to look at that. I think I have a bigger concern for people who are misusing and not and don't have and don't go through the proper steps to do business in in, in that area. Um, it's just wrong, and and you know we're, we're just not gonna we can't we can't have that anymore. We can't we can't allow that to happen. So um, I'm really gonna want to crack down on that, um, and uh, and hopefully you know we can resolve a lot of that. Um, other than that, um, you know I just want to see what the other commissioners may uh, have to say, and um, and, and I'll stay uh, silent till we get to that point. Mr. Piscotti, anything? Um, yeah, I, I just want to say that I, I know that our department is very good at, com, you know, checking out complaints, environmental complaints. In fact, there was one just last night about a, a different property about light pollution. And um, I know Enrico said that he'd get on that right away. So I see him typing a, an email right now to get on that. So um, I do know that you know, in my experience, that department has been really good about following up and monitoring. Um, a, a few other thoughts. Um, yeah, I've read through this agenda packet um, a few times because it's been on the agenda since last year. And um, so I, yeah, I, I guess what stands out is that 
It has actually a lot of community support to go ahead um, for the Guzmans. Um, I've also driven through this neighborhood and you know, the thing that I find striking is just the miles of railroad tracks. And so when you talk about railroad ties, I think, wow, there's, you know, I don't know, miles of railroad ties already there. So, um, yeah, I, the other thing that, that keeps coming up is I am not sure that it's our job in this meeting to vote on what might happen in the future. So I feel really cautious about, about voting on this case in particular and not speculating as to what might happen in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, we've heard from everybody. We've had questions asked, questions answered. The motion before us, we have a action to deny the appeal and uphold the CPC decision or to grant the appeal. So I will start with, is there a motion to deny the appeals? I will start with first item 5A. Is there a motion to deny item 5A, COA 2020-003 backslash CZ 2019-0013? I, uh, I move to deny the appeal, uh, and I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna vote to deny the appeal, but I am uh, gonna say that you know we're gonna keep we're gonna watch the, the the property and we're gonna watch the workings on in the in these neighborhoods to make sure that they they comply uh, with the special use permit. And, uh, be, and, and make sure that if there's any materials being stored, that they're being stored properly. Um, uh, I'm gonna make a commitment to the community on that. But I do, I do want uh, the Guzmans to be successful. Uh, and I have read the packet. I know they have a lot of support and I know they're good people. And sometimes it's about uh, doing good things for good people. And, and I think that they have a valid case on top of that. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah, I vote uh, 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 to uh, deny the, the appeal. I move. And I'll second denying the appeal. Um, and yeah, I agree. If, if this were in my community, I, I would want to know that it was monitored for health reasons um, and to know that the county would come out if there were an issue um, and, you know, manage that in some way. So, uh, but yeah, from everything that I've seen in our agenda packet and it just in my driving down that road and hearing here, I vote to deny the appeal. Thank you, Commissioner Pascotti. So we have a motion by Commissioner Casada, second by Commissioner Pascotti to deny the appeal. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously to deny the appeal. Ms. Cavanaugh, will you call the roll for this particular item? Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Pascotti? Aye. Commissioner Casada? Aye. Chairman Talbert. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move on to item 5B, COA 2020-002, backslash CZ 2019-0013. Is there a motion to deny the appeal? I move to deny the appeal. Is there a second? Commissioner Pascotti, a second. So there's a motion and a second to deny the appeal on item 5B. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ms. Cavanaugh, please call the roll. Commissioner Piscotti. Aye. Commissioner Kisava. Aye. Chairman Talbert. Aye. Thank you. Ms. Cavanaugh, we also need an ordinance number for this particular item. Would you please provide that? Yes, uh, this will be ordinance 2020-28. Thank you so much. Okay, the Board of 
The zone board zoning board has heard all items before them today. I thank everyone for their involvement, their engagement, and their uh, whether they are the appellant or the opponent. And one last closing comment I would like to make before we adjourn is this is my last zoning meeting as a commissioner. And I must say that over my last eight years, working with the talented staff of Bernalillo County across numerous issues that go across the gamut of uh, different kinds of things that I would have never imagined when I came into public office has been nothing less than extraordinary in terms of the way they've always presented the material uh, professionally, um, accurately, and without any bias ever towards one way or the other, just really looking at the facts and making sure that us as commissioners had everything we needed in order to make sure we could make the best decisions we could for our communities. So with that, I tip my hat to Albuquerque or Bernalillo County zoning for all of their amazing work over the last eight years uh, working directly with me. So thank you all very much. The next zoning meeting will be on February 9th, 2021. Someone else will be chairing it. And I wish them the best. And maybe it'll be live. Who knows? But if not, we got this Zoom thing down. So um, if there are no other business, this meeting is adjourned. We will take for the other commissioners a slight break before we start uh, with the zoning or excuse me, the finance meeting. So let's, uh, let's do the finance meeting beginning at about 4.05. Thank you all very much. Mr. Mr. Chair. Tavoya? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to check, um, is there an ordinance number for both of these appeals? I, I only heard one. Uh, Chairman Tower to Lucas, there's only one actual zone change, so they only need one ordinance number. Okay, thank you. Chairman Tower, you, members of the commission, thank you for your time today. Chairman Talbot, uh, good luck in your further adventures. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chairman. Good luck. We thank appreciate you. you. Oh, thank you so much. Everyone have a great afternoon and we'll see you all at about 4.05. Thank you.